Welcome back, Golly Vibes family. I pray everybody is doing well. Um, today's episode is going into one of those rabbit holes. Today is going to be with Shook Knight. Stay here to the end of the video. It's going to blow your mind what this man talks about. This is the type of person that not a lot of people like to interview. And you're going to see why because of the other things that he talks about and how open he is with what he's saying about a lot of these individuals and the things that they do behind closed doors. It is what you thought about and worse. Now, for those who don't know who Shig Knight is, Shig Knight um, was uh, uh, the man who was behind Death Row Records, right? He was the head, I guess I'd say, or the owner. And he had artists like Snoop Dogg, he had Dr. Dre, he had Tupac, he had the biggest names in the game at that time. Defo Records was super huge back in the 90s, early 2000s even maybe. Um, and they were all a part of it. You know, uh, Snoop died. They said that Suge had something to do with it. Um, Biggie died. They also said he had something to do with it. A lot of different rumors and allegations going around. But there's also there's actually somebody who even came out and said they took uh, Tupac's life and they said that Diddy paid them a million dollars or something like that. Um, but that's who Suge Knight is. But the question is now, do you know where Suge Knight is? For those who don't know where Suge Knight is, Suge Knight is in prison, ladies and gentlemen. He's in prison. And he's serving 28 years. Why is that? Along with his previous felonies of stealing a camera and sending a harassing text message to Straight Outta Compton director F. Gary Gray, triggered California's three strike laws. Can't get three strikes in California. However, I thought when you got three strikes, you get life in prison. I guess he got 28 years, huh? Triggering California's three strike laws, three strikes law. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison and is eligible for parole in October 2034. When he will be 69 years old. So Suge Knight is in prison until he's 69, if he makes it to 69. In his mind, he's like, you know, I'm in here the rest of my life. I have nothing to lose. I'm going to put it all on the table. I'm going to say everything I know. Clearly, clearly, he probably still wants to be seen. Different things as that he has that itch. Who knows what goes on in Mr. Knight's mind, Right. But the fact is, it lines up with a lot of different things that are already going on. And it's crazy interesting. Now, here's the interesting part. Not a lot of people like to do interviews with Suge Knight, I said. Correct? But there is this man named Michael Franzi. Right? Michael Franzi used to be a mafia individual back in the day. Super into mafia. One of those dudes making a whole lot of money. Um, I don't know if there's a movie of him or not. I'm sure there's there's different uh, books. Michael Franzi, Franzi was saved, right? He became a Christian. Hallelujah. And uh, he was also talking to Andrew Tate not too long ago. I don't know if you guys seen that video where he was interviewing Andrew Tate, but he Andrew, he interviews different individuals that it's, it's kind of hard to come across and interview them. That's what I'm taking from it. So Michael Franzi... Um, Ended up on the phone with Suge Knight. So that's the conversation we're going to listen to today. Uh, what Suge Knight was saying to Michael Franzi about these different people in the industry. Now, here's the crazy part. Suge Knight was not hesitant to bring up different names when it came when it came to Diddy. Right? Um, this is crazy. Because we, we, we see all these allegations going on when it comes to Diddy. And we've been hearing things in the background for I don't know how long. I know I have. I don't know how long. I, for those who don't even know, I rapped for Diddy before in the back of a club. And I could feel in my spirit that something was off. He was, he was right there. French Montana was right next to him. Lil Dirk was right next to them. And something was off. You know, when you, you know, you ever been like in a situation where you can, in the world, I know what it is now. But in the world, you just feel like something's off. It's a weird feeling here. Like, what is that? It's making me real uncomfortable. That That's the feeling I have. Right? Like the devil's just right in front of you. 
Not saying that he's the devil, but <clears throat> it was a strong, wicked presence. Most definitely. Um, but Suge Knight uh, didn't hold back to bring up names like Usher, bring up names like Justin Bieber. The Justin Bieber thing is sad, guys. I'm going to play a video of, of Justin Bieber a little later um, of him crying, talking about, I wish nobody uh, has to go through what I went through in the music industry. The kids went through a lot. Um, no matter, you know, I was glad when he drastically gave his life to Christ a couple of years ago. Since then, he's been like, you know, in and out. But I believe the Lord is pulling his heart, most definitely. It's a process. Hallelujah. I believe he's in this process. He keeps dip, dipping in and out. But I have faith for him. Hallelujah. You should have faith for him, too. Uh, T.D. Jakes. Boy, oh, boy. When, when I keep hearing T.D.'s name, I'm just like, what in the world is going on? What in the world? A bishop is to be, be unblameable in the world. Guys, I don't know who all reads the Apostolic Constitution, but you, you, your name shouldn't be getting brought up with situations like this. It shouldn't continuously. There's no way in the world a bishop from the early church is going to be at a P. Diddy party. Clearly, there's going to be skeptics and allegations and different rumors, if they're rumors, going around. Not only that, but different people are coming out. I showed you guys the the guy, Mr. Youngblood, saying that T.D. tried to kiss him. And then he called them that same day saying, when I come in town, you're the only person I'm going to be sleeping with. Make sure you don't mess with nobody because I don't want my wife to get anything. These are, pe these, these are, these are individual people's testimonies. What are, we, what are we supposed to ignore all of them? Not believe all of them? Come on, man. Even brought up your favorite Mr. Barack. Barack Shady Obama. Barack LGBTQ Obama. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and uh, play the clip of Suge Knight talking to Michael Frenzy. Everybody knew what Puffy did. This is just a big question. Is this? It's not one person didn't know that Puffy was an usher. Now, one person didn't know what the saddest thing in the world is what they did to Justin Bieber. What was that? That's sad. What'd they, what they do to him? Uh, because there's a lot of speculation out there, but nobody, I mean, I've heard things, but what did they really do to him? They had sex with him. When he was a and kid. Not, I hate to say that. But I hate to say that because I really like Justin Bieber. I feel bad for Justin Bieber. And, and this is when that happened. If Justin Bieber came from a, a wealthy family, Justin Bieber pretty much came from a poor family, but the young man was so talented that he could have been bigger than Michael Jackson. But the depression of the drugs and the stuff he allowed these grown men to do to this little boy is unhealthy and it's stuff. No grown men supposed to be getting high and doing drugs and drinking with kids. It, it should, you know, yeah, Justin Bieber has been has been getting this out in different ways. You know, you could just you could see it in his music and and just what he's been trying to say without saying it. So, I mean, I think everybody knows what you just stated to be true. I mean, you had grown men would take Justin Bieber. A grown man take Justin Bieber when he was young. A romantic vacation showing pictures on the Instagram with no women, nobody else but a grown, successful man and this little kid. And if, even if you and I was going on vacation together, and because if, if the wise mad or not, it's definitely not going to be in me, me and you. It's going to be mad because we're going to have to Oh, I'm not gonna be sitting on a romantic island just you and me. Hell you no. Know what I mean? Hell I no. The, I'd rather take the chance. I'd rather take the chance of my girl saying, "Hey, you know, you up there having parties and all." You, right? right. She definitely ain't gonna say this. You and I <laughs> on a romantic island. That's up. Hell so no. They took Justin Bieber and just them. That's a, not only is a bad look, it's sad. Yeah. But the worst part about it is everybody said what was done to Usher. And they done to Justin Bieber. And the thing with Usher, Usher spent the night and Prima Puppy being the same bed 
to do an album, and they never did one song they put out at that time. On top of that, when I met Usher, I came on one time. I'm speaking to the guy because he got good songs. That's out of respect. Black, young black man. This dude rolled his eyes at me. And so there was somebody came over and I kept this dude, you know, don't have one of your guys do nothing to him. He a good, he a good young man, but him and Plucky got a thing. He a thing. He said, he gave me a look like, you know. And I thought about it. The way he rolled his eyes at me, it wasn't like somebody homie I rolled it. It was like I beat up somebody, man, like, I beat his, I, you know, he the bitch, like somebody to roll their eyes, like you beat my boyfriend up, I don't, so I ain't speaking to you. Really? It's one of those, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the crazy thing about it is like, Leslie, his mother, and everybody else said the same thing. Well, it was wrong, but if we go and get Puffy in trouble behind that, Usher wouldn't be Usher. He'd be known as the guy who got molested by Puffy, and they didn't want that. They wanted the money. I met Usher back in, I think, 1999 or 2000. I did a concert up in San Francisco, and I had Usher and Casey and JoJo and a bunch of guys back then. And he, he was a nice kid at that time, man. He was respectful, and he did a great job. Um, I guess this was before Puffy got a hold of him. I don't have anything bad to say about Usher. Usher's talented. He's a good guy, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, he said he just um, contact with Casey and JoJo and Jody Cervante is one of the greatest producers, the greatest guys in the world, those guys. I love mm -hmm. all those guys. But they had their run in with, they know the truth. Everybody in the industry know what's been going on. Everybody know which one's taking it, which one's not taking it. But you got to realize one thing. This didn't start just with Usher and Jason, Justin Bieber or Puffy. Started with Michael Jackson. Started with, we can go on and on. Now, Puffy was being with L.A. Reid and Babyface. Who mm. <laughs> don't fall far from the tree? Yeah. Oh. If, you, if you want to know the truth of the fact that it's not nobody going to tell you that neither one of those two enjoy men. And when you really look at the situation in Hollywood, most of the guys who see reason why it's bad for the gay community because the gay, the gay community look at it like this. At least you know they're gay. These guys saying they're not gay, they're just having fun. So they really should know everybody, right? Yeah. But at the same time, Terrible. in Hollywood, a guy who's a homosexual, you got to get him married right away. When Andre Young told me immediately that he messed with men, I had to get him married right away. When all these guys, there's no different, but when you look at it, you take, you take Tracy, Tracy Edmonds, mm -hmm. wonderful woman, but she was trained, like other women were trained, to mess with guys who was gay in the industry, called a cover-up, even if they got to have a baby by them, even if they got to make them look good. So when you look at the people that she was married to, she was married to baby face. Everybody know baby face and Damien Thomas was lovers and a whole bunch of other people. There's no puzzle. Everybody knows at the same time that she was married to Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. It's not a situation where it's not a situation where don't nobody know and they never talk about Eddie Murphy. Right? Right. And she was also married to or uh, with Deion Sanders. Really? <laughs> Well, nobody expect prime time to be prime time. <laughs> no. 21 and 21, more ways than one. <laughs> so <laughs> these are facts that have been going around in this industry. So it's like, okay, so we all, anybody in the industry been knowing this is going on. And they create this monster kept growing and growing and growing and growing. Now it's at the point where so many so many people been destroyed, lives been destroyed. Mm. More importantly, it's a bad day for hip hop. So many people's lives have been destroyed. He talks about cover up wives. Can you imagine that being your job? Marrying not out of love, but to cover up somebody's homosexuality because of the industry that they're in? So they can make money off of you guys? 
by being fake and who they're not? You think the industry is not that wicked? Oh, it's wicked. Now we see why there's different times where Justin Bieber breaks down saying things like this. I feel protective of her. Um, it was hard for me being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's hard because I want her to know that, you know, she can count on me, but at the end of the day, I don't want to, I'm never going to force myself to be in relationship with her. It has to be natural, right? So I just kind of, you know, let her do her thing, and if she ever needs me, I'm going to be here for her. But, um, but, yeah, just protecting those moments because people take for granted uh, encounters and... Um, Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just, um, I just want to protect her, you know? I don't want her to, to, to lose it. I don't want her to, you know, go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. So, um, yeah, if she ever needs me, I'm, I'm just a call away. He says he doesn't wish anybody to go through what he went through. Justin Bieber is somebody who became rich at a very young age what do you think he's talking about because a lot of people are still in the space of delusion in the space of denial not wanting to believe their favorite icons can be wicked like that but oh your favorite icons can be wicked like that they think that they're god you understand what i'm saying jay-z calls himself jehovah it's a it's a play on jehovah god's name jehovah he thinks he's God. Diddy thinks he's God. There's a conversation where he's saying he's God. I don't know who's seen that phone call where he got really excited and hung it up and started yelling, I'm God, I'm God. Isn't that interesting? You know who else P. Diddy says is God? God, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, please. Just got that call one day from God, and she was like, it's, it's time. Put your faith in her. Because we know God is a woman. Put your faith in her. Because we know God is a woman. I don't know where that is where that is biblically. Even though I, I understand God is not male nor female. God is spirit. The Bible says. God has attributes of a father or a mother. He's comforting. Hallelujah. But it's not biblical to say God is a woman. Keep your faith in her. That's, that's what, who is his God? Who have you guys been looking up to this whole time? Now, I want to show you guys this video of Suge Knight talking about Barack Obama and TJ, T.D. Jakes being at his parties. Not only that, but I want to show you Jaguar Wright talking about Obama and Michelle being there and her seeing them. Guys, it goes deep. It goes, I mean, and the fact that it's all coming out. It's beautiful because a lot of people are going to be freed mentally because a lot of people are spiritually in prison because of people like Diddy, people like Jay-Z. You have to understand that it's a spiritual war out here. We're having a spiritual fight. That's why I'm not even mad at these people in the flesh. I'm trying to crack that spirit in the spirit. I pray these people are humbled by what the Lord is doing in their lives. You know what Jamie Foxx just said? I seen a clip of him saying, God blessed me by giving me a stroke. You know how powerful that is to understand that? You know how many people have a hard time or they get, have a stroke or they, they go to prison and they think that it's the devil doing that? No, it's God saying, wake up. Wake up and get yourself back in order. Get yourself back right with me, because if you don't, when you die, your soul will not be with me. It's the last thing you would wish on anybody is damnation. That's the last thing you would wish on anybody is damnation. You know how many people have died and their souls left their body and now they're in hell wishing that they can come back up to, up to earth and be in your position where you have free will and you have a choice whether or not you want to go up or you want to go down. Do you know how many people? are suffering for eternity 
yet you're watching this video and you're still on the tracks. You still haven't crossed over to be with God. You still want to live this life that they're living. You want to follow them. You want to be what they, what, what they are. You want to do what they're doing. When the truth is coming out about them, these little young girls, these boys who have their behinds tickled and played with for their ego, for them to feel like they have power, different blackmail tapes all in their houses, different cameras all in their houses, them drugging you and taking you, raping you to put it on camera, to have a sense of power and put you in spiritual bondage. That's where you want to be. That's what you want to do. Wake up, guys. It's really time to give it to God. It's really time to let go and let God. It's really that time. The light is shining, ladies and gentlemen, but do you see it? That's the true question. Check this video out. Yeah. Sounds a mistake. You think Obama had anything yeah. to do with, uh, with any of these parties that he had? Absolutely. Wow. You got presidents, you got preachers. P.D. Zek is one of the biggest black preachers around that everybody loves. Everybody in prison, if they try to get to the word of religion, they're not going to the chapels nowhere. They're trying to watch T.D. Jakes. He had to resign from his whole, his, his whole community. That's right. You talking about the you talking about the top of the top. Unbelievable. Top the top. Man, you know, I mean, I got a lot of questions with this guy, but you know, you answered the first one. How do you get away with something like this for all this time with all these people that are allegedly involved? You know, I want to tell you this. I was uh, I was in the same tier, the same cell that Epstein was on. And Shug, there's no way in hell that that guy could have committed suicide on that tier. I was in there for seven months. There's now, no way. And, and coming from you, I know you didn't know the truth. And I personally didn't think he was going to commit suicide. But the thing is, he had open recipe to everybody on that island. You know, any anybody with a red with a weird fetish, and that's what underage kids. Was on that island, and everybody knew it. So it's not like it's a situation where all of a sudden maybe there's been a talk, and you know as well as I know by you being on the same tier as him, he probably was gonna tell it all. He have to tell, you know. No doubt, no doubt in my mind at all. Maybe sure he did. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way he could have done it. You know, first of all, they're watching all the time. There's cameras, and just so happens that. One particular time, there's no cameras and no one, no one monitoring that. I had eyes on me 24-7 when I was there. So, I mean, I, I knew it was impossible. Always. <laughs> yeah. You have that one time to yourself. Nothing you at all. Jeffrey Epstein is somebody who had blackmail tapes on many individuals. Many individuals have been to that island, and that list is going to be released soon. Yeah. It's going to be released soon, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting what he said, though, right? Even with the Obama situation, the Mr. Jake situation. Well, watch what Jaguar Wright says about the Obamas. What are your thoughts on Obama allegedly attending free golf parties? Well, I know he was there. I seen him on a tape. And his wife went with him. They all hang out together. Yeah. They had well, a lot of fun in Cuba. What'd you say? They had a lot of fun in Cuba. Were they there with Jay-Z and Beyonce mm -hmm. at the same time? Mm -hmm. What kind of fun? Were they ordering pizza and hot dogs from Chicago? I think so. Ladies and gentlemen, pizza and hot dogs is, some, is they're talking about kids. It's cold words for children. Obama's kind of missing right now. I don't know why. He Sludgy came out and, and, and tried to shame all of black America for not wanting to vote for a not black lion. And now he didn't disappear that all of their magic done fell through the floor. Mm -hmm. All their magic has fell through the floor. Isn't that interesting how Kim Clement said that they were going to do everything they could to get a witch in the White House. And this is a witch telling you about magic. 
I seen different comments in my last post. People were asking me, how do you know Jaguar Wright is a witch? She said it. In fact, I'll post I'll post the episode of her talking about it at the end of this video. So you can see she said it herself. She rubbed her son's ashes over her face. It was trying to do voodoo on some people at a shop. <laughs> Jaguar Wright says she's a witch herself, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't a guess. As you can see, everything I see, I like to give you videos with it to show you that there's receipts with it. It's actual facts. I don't want you just guessing, playing the guessing game. But interesting, all of their magic didn't work. You know how much magic was going, going up against Donald? Why do you think that is? Why do you think all of them? Kamala brought Beyonce out on stage. Hillary Clinton brought Jay-Z out on stage and Beyonce. Kamala brought Megan Thee Stallion, Glorilla, Cardi B, what she thought was black culture, but really was just degrading you. It's such an embarrassment. Maybe if she actually was black, she probably wouldn't know what black culture is. But she doesn't, so she was listening to individuals who were trying to tell her what it was. Listen to me. Somebody on stage twerking their butt is not black culture. That's just ghetto. Okay? And ghetto is not black culture. There's white people that are ghetto. There's Asians that are ghetto. <laughs> there's Mexicans that are ghetto. Let's not get it intertwined, ladies and gentlemen. My mother is not ghetto. My grandmother's not ghetto. My sisters are not ghetto. I, I, I have some ghetto family members. I got some hood family members. I've been around it all. But I know the difference between black culture and ghetto. And what Kamala tried to do was act like black culture was get You get what I'm saying? I hope you're keeping up. There's a difference. What she was doing was mad disrespectful, trying to pander to black people with ghetto -ness. You get what I'm saying? There is a difference, ladies and gentlemen. Get that trash out of here. I don't know what she was thinking about. Then had the nerve to, when somebody yelled out, Christ is king, she said, oh, you're at the wrong rally. Then she wanted to call up Jamal Bryant. When she walked in Jamal Bryant's church and I seen she was with Jamal Bryant, I said, oh, yeah, she a witch. Jamal Bryant is probably the biggest wolf I have ever seen behind a pulpit. That is just blatantly a wolf. The people in his congregation are in judgment even staying under him. I said what I said. I said what I said. You are guilty by association for being under a wolf in sheep's clothing. May the Lord bring you out of that bondage you are in. Once you realize you are under a wolf, you got to come out of this place of fear and step away, ladies and gentlemen. Step away. May the Lord continue to bring light. As the world is getting darker, you shall see the light more and more. Why do you think I'm here lifting my voice as a trumpet? For you to see light. But will you see it? Will you hear the horn or will you just hear wind? <sighs> what will you hear? Will you see the truth or will you ignore it? Will you hear the facts or you think they're just opinions? This is the questions, my ladies. This is the questions, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. These are the questions. Where are we at? Where are we at? I don't know. But I know the Lord is around the corner. Hallelujah. Let me know what you think. Comment. Subscribe. God bless you. Shalom. I love you.